My family's been into racing um, pretty much for their whole lives as well. Um, my, grand my grandpa on both sides, so my mum's dad and my dad's dad are both mechanics um, and, and they naturally followed car racing as a result. My dad came back from a business trip with some remote control cars when I was five or six and then I was just messing around with them, basically with him. And then I started racing those with my dad when I was like six. Uh, and then, yeah, kept going with that until I was about nine or 10. And then we met somebody um, through that who was, was in the karting scene. Uh, and yeah, I, they offered me a go in their, in their kart one day and um, yeah, loved it. And then the, the next week I had my own sitting at home and. And from then on, it was a bit of a mix between carding and remote control cars, but um, yeah, carding won out pretty quickly in that battle. So I started carding in Australia when I was about 10 or 11. And then I think 2014 was my first year. I did the, the national championships and um, finished second in my my first national championships, which was in a class that I'd only raced once before. So that was that was pretty cool, and that was my yeah. It was nice to have a good result in my first national championship, and then uh, later that year I raced in the X30 World Finals in Le Mans, um, and I finished third in the end. Um, so that was kind of my first. Well, that was my first international race, and. Um, I didn't really know at the time, but that was kind of my dad's uh, indicator whether we should pursue Europe more seriously. Um, so that was my first foray into European racing and then 2016 we, we went full out um, and, and moved to the UK and I raced for Ricky Flynn Motorsport for that year and the, I think the best result I had was a, a sixth at the World Championship. So I was, uh, yeah, I wouldn't say I was anything that special in karting, to be honest. I was kind of there or thereabouts in the top 10, but never, um, yeah, never really quite on top. But I like to think things have changed now. Um, so yeah, I moved to the UK full time in at the beginning of 2016, uh, and I moved with my dad for the first uh, six or seven months. And at that time, I was still doing school pretty much online from Australia. Um, and then we sort of you know, realised pretty quickly that that wasn't going to be sustainable. So then we started looking at sending me to school, and the only real viable option, um, because at the time I was only 15. Um, the only viable option was, was to go to boarding school because um, I've, I've got three sisters. It's, it's just too far away. So for them, um, you know, it was, was basically go to boarding school and, and keep chasing your dream or go back to Australia, race, race there and, you know, be able to, to stay with my family basically. So I chose the, the boarding school route because I didn't think my time in Europe was done. Um, and, and yeah, clearly it's, it's definitely not done. Yeah, I think the thing I missed the most was probably my family and friends. I think you know, it's the same for anybody and especially at that age, it was you know, a big change. Um, but I think going to boarding school did definitely help with that, um, making new friends and that was you know, quite nice, I guess. Um, but yeah, not being able to see my family and, and friends and also even communicating with them because of the time difference. It was, it's, it's very tricky even now to, to communicate with them for, for most of the day. Um, so that was probably the most difficult thing. Um, and then of course the Australian weather and just the Australian lifestyle, it's a bit different to, to the UK and I'm used to the UK now, but um, yeah, I, if I could go back to Australia and, and live there and magically teleport back, then, then I definitely would, I think. 
So I did the, that European karting season in 2016 and then towards the end of that year, kind of deciding whether I'd do a year in seniors in karting or, or go straight to F4. Um, and I did a few test days in an F4 car um, in the UK. And yeah, from, from that point on, I knew that I wanted to, to do F4 because yeah, firstly it was, was fun and cool to drive a faster car, but secondly, I was, was quick straight away. You know, I was kind of optimistic that it would be better than the karting season that I had, which in the end it turned out to be. I did British F4 in, in the following year in 2017 and finished second. Um, and yeah, I think I had six race wins and uh, the same amount of poles. So it was, yeah, that was a, a satisfying move into to single seaters. And then um, after that, I went into Formula Renault Euro Cup and did my first year there with Arden, which was another challenging year. Um, I think I finished eighth that year. And, and then for the following year, we had a new car in the, in the Euro Cup and I changed teams to R race and, and won the championship. Um, so that was, yeah, the first big thing I won in, in single seaters and, and the first championship I'd won um, ever, basically. Uh, a lot of the, the races I'd won in Australia in karting were sort of just one-off races. I'd never really won a, a, a championship, so that was the first big uh, series I'd won. I think, you know, the, the reason everybody races is to go winning. Um, of course, we all go to have fun as well, but winning is the best way to have fun. Um, and yeah, that was, was, was awesome. And um, I think that kind of really cemented to myself that, you know, I can compete here in Europe with, with everyone else. And I'm not just some kid from Australia trying to make it anymore. I'm, you know, kind of establishing a name for myself. Um, and yeah, that was, was a big confidence boost. And I think that whole year with, it, with a brand new car and the way I you know, kind of helped the team develop the car and, and stuff like that, that was also quite satisfying personally to, to tackle that new challenge and, and come out on top. Winning Euro Cup was, the prize was, was a spot in the academy if I wanted it. Um, and I didn't actually know even if I finished second, it was kind of a two horse race for the championship. I didn't know if I finished second, if I would have been in or not. Um, so I wanted to win, firstly to win the championship, but also for that spot, it was, that was a pretty you know, big, big step. Um, so that was, was nice to, to win that and, and get into the academy. And yeah, I've obviously been there ever since and entering my second, well, halfway through my second year with the academy now. Um, and, and yeah, they've been really great. Um, you know, they've, they've given me three F1 tests, which is more than I think I ever thought I'd probably get in my lifetime. So they've been great for that side of things. Obviously, they've been helping out financially with my racing as well, but um, pretty much my, my whole life at the moment is, is based around being in the academy. I live 20 minutes from the, the F1 factory at Enstone, and I use the gym there pretty much every day of the week when I'm when I'm there um, so yeah they've really it's really been a big part of my life in general not just my racing life but but my whole life um, so yeah it's been great having their support and um, yeah hopefully we can we can get the final step together as well So joining Prema for F3 um, was a pleasant surprise. Um, I had a few offers on the table from, from different teams, um, but the one that eluded me was, was from Prema. Before the Euro Cup season ended, Rene was, was very nice and told me that no matter where I finished in Euro Cup, I, I could have a seat if I wanted it. So that was nice to, to know that at least um, well, at that stage I didn't know if I was going to drive for Prema, but as soon as I had the offer on the table, it pretty much got rid of all the other offers. So um, that was the beginning of, of my time here at Prema and, and then, yeah, obviously the first year together was, was very successful in F3. 
and you know there's quite a lot of pressure coming into Premier in F3 because obviously they've, they've won pretty much everything for the last 10 years so I was aware that um, firstly I was aware that I was going to have a car that was good and secondly I was aware that I had to drive good to, to not make myself look like an idiot um, so yeah that was was cool and and you know when you have the chance to race for Premier I think if you if you don't take that opportunity and, and use it to the best of your ability then um, you know then you're doing something wrong so once that offer came up we took it pretty quickly and yeah it's been a successful story since then I think you know when you get to the end of a championship especially when you've been leading or second in the championship for the whole year and you you manage to win it's always a relief I've managed to sort of hold on and I think that year was Last year was definitely a case of, of holding on for the championship um, rather than sort of coming from behind and, and grabbing it. Um, so yeah, it was a bit of a struggle at the end, but a big sense of relief, but also a, a massive achievement because I'd come in as a rookie and okay, I was with Premier, so I was expected to do well, but I think even still for a rookie, it was, was pretty impressive. The original plan was to do a second year and uh, to, to achieve what we wanted in the first year, that was, was very satisfying and, and I was very proud of that. Obviously after the F3 Championship, I knew that I'd be um, stepping up to F2. So we continued our harmonious relationship. For me personally, it's been quite a lot better than, than the F3 Championship. Um, I think I feel like I'm driving better and uh, have a a better understanding of the car which I think in some respects is due to having a bit more testing for F2 because of COVID we didn't really have any testing for F3 just that three days and then a sort of four or five month break but yeah I feel like the, the season this year is going really well and we've just continually got stronger every round. I think after the first weekend in Bahrain um, getting that first win was was a good confidence boost. Um, we weren't actually that fast in that race but to still be able to win a race when we weren't necessarily the quickest was was satisfying and then the feature race um, didn't didn't end the way I wanted it to but I think our pace was the biggest takeaway from that weekend for me in that feature race and showed to myself that you know I can do a pit stop change compound of tyres in my first race at the moment it's it's quite tough but uh, you know I think with the results I've shown in my previous years and and so far this year in F2 um, I'm still quite confident that at some stage in the future I'll be able to, to get to F1. The, the only thing I can do is, is keep performing on track and, and basically give people no excuses as to why I shouldn't be there. And I'm not particularly interested in racing in, in other categories because I think it's, it's best to stay in the F1 paddock and, and you know, still be there and, and not sort of out of sight and out of mind racing something else so just a big thank you um, Hopefully by the time this video comes out, I've, we've won a second championship together, so that would be perfect. If it hasn't, then cut it out. Um, but yeah, thank you. Um, it's been, yeah, by two of the best years of my career and, and my life in general. It's been a very fun two years together. Um, and yeah, we've had a lot of success on the track and a hell of a lot of fun off the track as well. So. Um, Thank you very much and yeah, I'm sure I'll see you around at a racetrack somewhere in the future. The moment of arrived for the Prima Man, Oscar Piastri wins the Formula 2 Championship of 2021.